praise the Lord. Well, welcome to another session. This is God Believes in You, Part 2. You can read this from uh, my uh, website, andrewshreve.org, under the July 2011 part and letter. Hallelujah. So, even though we cannot improve our right standing with God, okay, we can't, we can't uh, be any more righteous than we are because our right standing is based on faith in what Jesus has done. So, our, our righteousness is not based on what we do. It's based on faith in what Jesus has done. Therefore, we cannot improve our righteousness. We cannot make ourselves more righteous than we are in Christ. So even though we can't improve our right standing, God's will is that we continue to improve our thinking and our actions. So even though our righteousness is set already and can't be improved, nevertheless, our, our thoughts and actions can be improved. So regardless of our faults, God wants us to... Keep our faith in Christ as our basis of righteousness. He wants us to forgive ourselves. He wants us to accept his wonderful blessings and great plans which will lead us into a richer life. So regardless of how much we're struggling in our Christian walk, God still wants us to you know, keep going. Even though we might fail a thousand times, he wants us to keep going. Keep trying to improve ourselves. Sometimes Christians come under a feeling of condemnation because of their failures and sins. They struggle to believe they're good enough to be a Christian. You know, I've seen pastors who are no longer in the ministry, no longer even walking with the Lord, no longer even necessarily believing in the Lord. Because I don't know why they, that's happened, but it's, it's happened. Okay, and so uh, and there's a lot of Christians that don't no longer go to church, or you know they struggle. There's a lot of lot of there's a lot of fallout. You know, a lot of Christians are no longer in the uh, walking in with the Lord, and they probably don't think they're good enough. They may even feel like quitting on Christianity and giving up. But if you really think deeply about it, nobody is good enough to to be a Christian. A Christian is one who, who strives for perfection and holiness, to be like Jesus. I mean, we're told to imitate God, right? We're told to be follow Jesus. Well, Jesus was perfect, right? So we're really setting ourselves up, as, as Christians, we're setting ourselves up for failure because we're trying to be perfect. And, of course, we're not perfect. And so we all, all Christians, continually fail in this endeavor because... We struggle with weakness, failure, and sin. There's not one person that can honestly stand up and say, I'm perfect and without sin. They can't do it. First John 1 John 1.8 says, I think a reference I gave earlier should have been 1 John 4, eight, not okay, regarding God is love. But anyway, 1 John 1 John 1.8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So we all have sin. So we're all, all Christians are aspiring to be like Jesus. They're aspiring to be perfect. And yet, the Bible says we all have sin. So we all have failure. All of us. So this really teaching is trying to help people deal with failure. The failure of not being perfect. The failure of not being holy, completely holy in everything. So, but a beautiful aspect of the Gospel is that God understands our weakness. Right? God, God maintains belief in us even when we break man's law or God's law. God says... I know you are imperfect. That's why I sent Jesus. Jesus has taken our sins. He's absorbed the punishment, the condemnation, the shame that we all deserve. Jesus has borne our judgment for our sin. God says, I understand. I love you. I'm with you. I have great plans for you. I will help you. I believe in you. You are my son, my daughter. You have in you the seeds of greatness. Others may condemn, criticize, and lose faith in you, but not me, says the Lord. I see your failures and sins, and I still believe in you. Come on, keep trying, have another go. I will provide for you, strengthen you, and lead you. Hallelujah. The teaching of God's grace toward our sins is not intended to be abused through an attitude of laziness and irresponsibility towards the disciplines of love and holiness. God has demonstrated, in other words, just because God gives us grace and believes in us doesn't mean we should just be lazy and kick back and, and do wrong things. No, that's not, that's not right. Okay. God has demonstrated His belief in us by extending to us His grace. 
To some extent, though, we all abuse God's grace when we sin. If you think about it, I mean, if we when we sin, we abuse the grace, haven't we? So we all we're all guilty to a, to a measure of that doing that. But God hopes, even when we sin, that we will ultimately improve ourselves. God woos us through His great love, His unending grace, believing that we will obediently love Him from our heart, not because of some divine retribution, threat of divine retribution, but because of an understanding of who God is. God is, God endures with us, hoping we will fall in love with a genuine, a genuine attraction to Him, to His character, to His holiness, His wisdom, his loving vulnerability, his willingness to forgive, his kind patience, and his authentic interest in our well-being. So it's almost like God has just done all these wonderful things for us, and we can abuse it, but God's believing that we won't. It's like he's he's he died on the cross, you know. He he absorbed the punishment and and loved us, and then at the same time gave us freedom. And believes that we're going to do the right thing with what he's given us. The gospel message of God's grace, love and forgiveness gives great hope to the weak and sinful. You know, the Apostle Paul championed justification by faith through grace in his letter to the Galatians. In Galatians 5, 4-5, it says this, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So Paul's basically saying that if you're trying to merit your righteousness or the favor of God through your ability to obey law or to be a good person, then Christ has no benefit for you, has no effect unto you. You don't need the grace because you've done it yourself. But the gospel is all about the grace of God. It's all about Jesus doing it for us and us just accepting it. Righteousness is through faith, not through our, our effort. So, we are commanded to keep ourselves from sin, but righteousness is not attained through our ability not to sin, our good works or our maintenance of law. It's like, you put the, don't put the cart before the horse. The horse is God's grace right, and God's righteousness, which is a, is a gift. As a result of that, we should do good things. Don't put the heart first. Don't put the good things in front of the grace. It doesn't work like that. Okay, Grace comes first. Mercy comes first. Christ comes first. Then we're to do good things. Don't try to put the good things. Then you don't need Christ anymore if you're just trying to do things through your own effort. Righteousness is God's gift to us by grace through faith in Christ. The, this teaching of God's grace is the offense of the cross. You know, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 11 Paul talks he says in I brethren if I yet preach circumcision why do I yet suffer persecution then is the offense of the cross ceased in other words if Paul was preaching that we should be circumcised that we should obey the law that that would that's going to justify us then then uh, he wouldn't be, have been persecuted he was persecuted because he taught Justification by faith through God's grace. That's what the religious folks didn't like. You know, they persecuted those who tried to maintain circumcision and law. They persecuted Paul. So, well, how do we respond to these things? Open your heart to the Lord. Confess your sin to Him. Ask for His forgiveness. Appropriate by faith. His cleansing blood to your sin. Accept His gift of righteousness, which only comes through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 John 1 7 says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Hallelujah. Romans 5 15 and 17 says, But not as the offense, so also is a free gift. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we need to walk in the light of the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to walk as a cleansed, righteous man, righteous man or woman. 
You know, most people do not, most people rather underachieve, not because of a deep revelation of God's unmerited favour, God's righteousness and power and grace received through faith in the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ. They underachieve because of a poor self-image and lack of confidence. They know their faults and weaknesses and limit their ambitions to the experience of their failure. So in other words, they, they look at their failures and they, they say, well, that's, I'm, I'm, the, I'm so bad, that's as high as I can get in life. It's wrong. They should rather limit their ambition to who they can become in Christ Jesus. Let's not focus on our failures and weaknesses. Let's focus on what Jesus has done for us, who God says we are in Christ Jesus. We need to develop a righteousness consciousness, a word of God consciousness, a vision of our life according to God's promises, not according to our failures. Our failures are in the past. We must forget the things which are behind and look to the future. In other words, our focus needs to be not on all our failures and all our problems and all our sins. Jesus has dealt with that. Our focus needs to be on the scripture and what God has said we are in Christ. Let's focus on that. Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. He says, Not as though I already attained, either were already perfect. He wasn't. See, Paul wasn't saying he was perfect. He knew he had sinned. He says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Know that God is in you. His love, His power, His ability, His nature, His strength, His resources, His joy and His peace. Embrace His word concerning you. You are His beloved bride and church. God has destined you for greatness. God created you and believes in you. He has uniquely gifted and blessed you with everything you need to fulfill His plan for your life. Ephesians 1.3 says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says that His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Everything we need for life and godliness has been given to us. His power. Listen to His Spirit. You can discern His Spirit in your heart, urging you on. He's saying, God is saying, I am with you. I'm your Savior, your lover, your friend. I will never leave you. I will never reject you. I will always be there for you. I will always believe in you. I will always be your cheerleader. This is our champion, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you that you believe in me. Thank you that you never condemn and reject me because of my failings, weaknesses and sins. I know you will always lead me in love. You crown me with loving kindness and tender mercies. You do not treat me according to what I deserve, but according to what Jesus' righteousness deserves. I'm hidden in Christ, my blessed Saviour. I love you so much for all that you are and all that you have done. I accept your gift of righteousness. I forgive myself and get up and fight the good fight faith. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Lord, thank you so much that you love us, that you accept us unconditionally because of our faith in Christ. Thank you that Jesus' blood made us righteous. Thank you, Lord, that even though we may fall down a thousand times, you say, get up. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I'm for you. I'm with you. Thank you, Lord. We love you so much. Lord, bless your people with this understanding, Lord, that you believe in them, that you have a plan for them, that regardless of their faults, regardless of their past, you have a good plan, a good new a new start, fresh start, cleansing with the, 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 the blood of, of Jesus. Let your glory come upon them right now, right now. Let the anointing come upon them to know your goodness, to know your love, to know the blessed blessed Jesus. He's so wonderful. I love you, bless you, and look forward to talking to you again soon.